The year is 2012. Rumor has it that by the end of the year, the ancient Mayans would awake from their eternal slumber and bring an end to the entire world. After all, it was written right there in the Mayan calendar. One afternoon on November 5th, after coming home from school, a young boy is in the living room playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Then suddenly, disaster strikes. A meteor from outer space comes crashing down into the Earth's atmosphere. The Mayans were right. Within hours, humanity is wiped clean off the face of the Earth. The boy perishes and is sent straight to hell. He wakes up in hell, except that it looks exactly like his bedroom. As usual, he hops on his computer, except this time, he finds something truly insidious awaits him. Welcome to us. Hey guys, welcome back, long time no see. This video has been a long time coming because this is my 10 year Osu anniversary video. So 10 years is a long time to be playing Osu, so you guys might be wondering, why? Well, I just really like to click the circle. So without further ado, I'd like to take you guys on this 10 year long journey. And uh, I'll show you what that was like. But first, let me show you something. So I just want to show you guys my website real quick. It's called Osu Collector. So the problem that this website is trying to solve is that in Osu, you can create collections. And collections are great. Everyone keeps collections to organize their maps. But the problem with collections is that they're entirely local. You can't share collections, you can't download other people's collections. But with Osu Collector, you can. People have been using Osu Collector for over a year now, and so we have a huge database of over 4,000 user-submitted collections. It's super easy to download a collection and add it to your game. A while ago, I also added a new feature, tournaments. So here you can browse past tournaments and quickly download the map pools for each. What are, what are you, you waiting, waiting for? for? Get, Get collecting, collecting with, with Osu, Osu Collector. Collector. Visit Osu Collector today at www.osucollector.com. So let's start from the beginning. On November 5th, 10 years ago, I was looking for a song by Hatsune Miku called Gizen Seigi. And so while I was looking for that song on YouTube, I came across an Osu video of that song. And not gonna lie, when I first saw this video, I had no idea what I was looking at. I didn't even know it was a PC game, I thought maybe it was like a DS game or something. But there was a link to the game in the description, and so I decided to actually try this game. And when I soon figured out how the game worked, I got instantly hooked. Keep in mind that before I started playing Osu, I was mainly playing Counter-Strike Surf and Half-Life 2 Deathmatch. Two games that require absolutely no thinking, just pure mechanical skill. So this game was right up my alley. And for that day, I played for like 6 hours. And I remember, by the end of that session, I noticed that my fingertips were sore from hitting the keys. And so for the next couple of years, I was just completely devoted to this game. During all of my free time, I would play Osu whenever I could. And when I was done playing Osu, I would move on to YouTube to watch some more Osu videos. And so that's where I discovered all the top players at the time like CookieZ, White Wolf, Happy Stick, etc. But the two players I want to bring to attention are Sylvia and the Lua because they meant quite a bit to me at the time. So back then, if you were to ask someone who's the best Osu player, you would 100% of the time get the answer, Cookie Z. And likewise, if you were to ask who's the best mouse player, at that time, 
Everyone knew the answer was Sylvia. Sylvia was just miles ahead better than any other mouse player at the time, and for a long time, he was the player that I tried to emulate. So because of Sylvia, I committed to playing mouse even to this day. Sylvia actually quit way back in 2012, and it looks like he's moved on to something a lot more exciting than Osu. So the other player, the Lua, was a top player from Finland. And the reason I bring him up is because of his Ask.fm. So if you don't already know, uh, Ask.fm was basically like Twitter, but in an anonymous Q&A format. It's where you could ask your favorite Osu player any question you want, and there would actually be a pretty good chance that they would respond to you. It's pretty much dead now, everyone's moved to Twitter, but back then that was basically where most of the Osu community was. So back to the Lua's Ask.fm. Until then, my only exposure to the Osu community had been from watching replays and people recording live plays on YouTube. But finding the Lua's Ask.fm was like getting an inside look into the Osu community for the first time. The first time I ever heard about mechanical keyboards was on the Lua's Ask.fm. About a month later, I got my very first mechanical keyboard for Christmas. A CM Storm Quickfire TK, the same one that Cookiezy used. Also, whenever there was drama on the Osu community, and believe me, there was a lot. I would first hear about it on Ask.fm. So after following the Lua's Ask.fm for years, uh, I felt like I got to know one of Osu's top players a little bit better. The Lua was incredibly funny, witty, and intelligent. He was an avid reader of books, which is how he attained an extremely high level of English while living in Finland. Despite being cemented in the top 5 global ranking for as long as I can remember, he was also self-deprecating of his own skill, often seeing himself as inferior when comparing himself to other players. But him being a smart guy, he didn't just always acknowledge his weaknesses. He also understood what his strengths were, and he knew deep down he's a pretty good player. And so, day to day, he would flip-flop between being self-deprecating one day to overflowing with confidence the other day. And to me, he just struck me as being a really genuine and relatable guy. And so for years, I would look up to him, both for his accomplishments inside the game and his unique personality outside the game. Looking back, I can see that I was already determined to become a top player from the very beginning. All the pieces that a player needs to improve at the game had already been in place for me within the first couple of months. Let me explain. So when people say that in order to improve at Osu, you need to play more. But the only reason why the top players played as much as they did is because they had sufficient time and motivation. So maybe the question you guys want answered is, where does this time and motivation come from? Obviously everyone's situation is different, but I can at least answer that question for myself. So why did I have so much time? Well, I was in high school and I didn't really have that many ob obligations, and I didn't really have any other hobbies either, so I basically just had a buttload of time to play Osu. And to really illustrate just how much time I spent playing Osu, I found my old hard drive which contained my old Osu install. And in that old Osu install, there's a bunch of replay files that got created every time I played a map. So I extracted all those timestamps and I plotted all the timestamps on a calendar. And as you can see, this data paints a pretty interesting picture of what my lifestyle was like back 9 years ago. So you can see large blocks of time where there would be no replays. This is when I was going to school. And more interestingly, you can see how early I was going to sleep and how early I was waking up just to play Osu. I would literally wake up at 5am, play Osu for a few hours, and then go to school. Looking back, that was actually kind of nuts. Like there's no way I could go back to doing that again. So how about motivation? Well, the most obvious one is because playing Osu is super fun. Sometimes you don't need a deep meaning to do something. As long as it gives you that dopamine hit, you'll end up doing it anyway. But for me, it wasn't just the dopamine. I also saw my own talent and recognized that I could be extremely good at this game if I put in the work. And lastly, I wanted clout. I saw the recognition that top players were getting, and I wanted it for myself. Around that time, I recently moved to a new town, a new school and so I didn't really have that many friends. I was basically the quiet kid at the back of the class, and I figured, well, if I can't get people to notice me in real life, I can maybe get people to notice me on the internet. And so yeah, that's where my time and motivation came from. Sprinkle in some Filipino genetics, and you have the <laughs> ultimate Osu playing life.
all of the players from Canada have missed right now, so there's huge stakes for United Kingdom. Now, as someone who never participates in tournaments, you might be surprised to hear this, but I actually did play in OC World Cup way back in 2013. I don't really remember too much about the tournament, aside from the fact that I was super nervous the whole time, and I also missed a match because I took a nap and slept right through it. I had to message the team saying like, ah, oh, sorry guys, I had something important come up, ah, oh, sorry, I couldn't make it. But in reality, I slept right through it like an idiot. And, you know, I always thought that was pretty funny. So after OC World Cup, I still had a ton of motivation. And sometime in January of 2014, I reached number one Canada on OSU TP. Now you might be asking, what the hell is OSU TP? Well, back then, uh, OSU TP was a separate OSU ranking website, which would soon be officially incorporated into the game as PPV2. So after I got number one on OSU TP, shortly after, uh, PPV2 was added to the game, and I was officially number one Canada on the official leaderboards. But this only lasted for a short time. I don't remember how long exactly, but it could have been anywhere from a couple of weeks to a couple of months. And I'm not sure who took my place, but I'm pretty sure it was either Lane or Azer. So even after both those accomplishments, I still had a few very clear goals in mind. If you're an Osu boomer like me, you'll remember that the community was fixated on three extremely infamous maps. Big Black, Airman, and Freedom Dive. Getting a score on any of these maps would mean that the whole community would instantly hear about it and make you a god in their eyes. And I wanted that to be me. Uh, Freedom Dive was clearly out of the picture because my streaming ability wasn't even close to being good enough, but I had a good chance at Big Black and Airman. And so every day I trained, and on some days I put some serious attempts into Big Black and Airman. I would post some of those attempts to YouTube, and because those maps were extremely popular back then, a few of those videos actually got a lot of views. Then, one day, I go to the Lua's Ask FM and I see this. Now, I'm not sure why, but this suddenly gave me a huge amount of hope that I myself could FC Airman. The Lua has always been like a god to me, but that time I was feeling pretty cocky. I felt like I was on the same level as him. So I thought maybe if he could FC it, then I can too. And so every day I grinded Airman, and only five days later, I got the score. The dream score. A 1-100 hidden FC on Airman. Nobody had seen a score like this before. For the first time, I had caught the attention of the entire Osu community. It also caught the attention of the Lua. I, th I just think that mouse takes a bit more effort, but I mean, we've got so many good mouse players nowadays, and I mean, well, we've got Fun Orange, we've got Captain Nixon, and we used to have Sylvia, who are really a testament to how good playing with a mouse, how possible playing with a mouse at a high level is. At that moment, my life had peaked. The very next day, I received a letter of invitation in the mail. Oprah Winfrey wanted me to be on a show. I couldn't believe it, so I tore up the letter and the show never happened. But long story short, this is when I peaked and nothing even comes close to it even to this day. So after Airman, um, I, I don't really remember too much, it was kind of a blur. But looking back at the charts, it looked like my play count was slowly dropping and so was the amount of scores that I was setting. Maybe I got too comfortable after finally setting my dream score. Then for no reason at all, I take a 3 month break and when I return I go crazy and I set a bunch of scores. This only goes on for a month though. Next, I would enter a one year hiatus. So I think sometime in March 2015, I decided that I would quit Osu indefinitely. And so what happened was, I gave my username and password to Azer, and I told him to change the password so that I couldn't log in, and also to change the account email from mine to his, so that I couldn't just easily password reset and get my accounts back. The reason that I told myself and everyone around me was because it was my last year of high school and I wanted to focus on my grades so that I could get into a good university. And this was partly true. I ended up studying extremely hard and out of the three Canadian universities that I applied to, I got accepted by all of them. But academics aside, I felt that for some reason OSU was like a huge negative part of my life. For a long time, I always felt compelled to quit as if it was like the end goal for every OSU player. So enter my hiatus. I feel like during this time, I was forcing myself to quit even though I still wanted to play Osu. So during this one year of being locked out of my account, I was actually still playing quite a bit offline, and I was even posting some videos to YouTube. And so, of course, after one year, I came crawling back. I asked for some favors, and on May 20th, 2016, I got my accounts back. 
After I got back, I went ham and just set a bunch of scores. Uh, I guess I was pretty active, but to be honest, this period wasn't super memorable for me. It was kind of just like getting back into the routine. I do remember that this is the time I got super into tech maps, and my goal was to be the best hidden tech player in the game. It was around this time that I uploaded two of my favorite videos on this channel, Candyland and Seashore on the Moon. Soon after though, I got burnt out again and slowed down for a few long years. By this point, I'd been learning programming for several years now, and so I decided to make OC Trainer. So the idea was that I would make a program that lets you speed up maps by any multiplier you wanted, not just the 1.5 times offered by Double Time. See, if you want to improve at the game, you have to play maps that are not too easy, but also not too hard. You need to hit a sweet spot where you're being appropriately challenged. The problem is that it's hard for players to find these maps that are in the sweet spot. Because for most maps, the sweet spot lies in between no mod and double time. So I just knew that the OSU community needed this program. And so for a few months, I worked on OSU Trainer. And on 420, it was ready for a public release. Well, it's been over two years now, and since its release, I've had so many people download and use OSU Trainer. If it's helped them improve at the game the same way it did for me, then I can't help but feel like I'm at least a little bit responsible for the game's overall skill level being where it is today. Uh, so shortly after I made OSU Trainer, uh, I also made this other program called Circle Tracker. Alright, so I'm just going to show you how this thing works. So this is Circle Tracker, this is what it looks like when you open it up. And to demonstrate how this thing works, I'm just going to uh, play a random map. Alright, that was pretty good. So I'm going to... Uh, hit quit, and I don't know if you heard that, but it played a sound. And that's how you know um, it recorded the play into your spreadsheet. So if you open up your spreadsheet and not your script, then you can see that it recorded the play. It's here. See? 81 hits. Uh, so once the data is in here, uh, the program's job is done. Uh, so in the other tabs of the spreadsheet, then it's a bit more interesting. So here I'm basically just uh, presenting the data in interesting ways. So for my case, I'm trying to get faster, so I'm interested in seeing how many 7 star 230 BPM maps I'm playing. Uh, I'm also able to set a daily goal for myself, so every day I'm trying to play uh, a certain amount of these maps uh, in order to fill up these gre green bars. So yeah, that's basically the gist of um, this spreadsheet system. 2020 was a very special year. Not because of the pandemic, but because I started playing Osu again. But this time was different. I had a plan to reach the top 100 in two months, playing only one hour a day. My body was to undergo the most efficient training regimen of all time. My method involved three things that nobody else was doing. Osu trainer, circle tracker, and forearm exercises. You okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm just gonna go go and check my mail over there. You been lifting weights? Uh, no. No, I don't think it. No. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Peter, I, I, gotta, I gotta get back. So for the first time in a while, I was super committed to Osu. Every day I was playing 7 and 8 star maps for an hour a day minimum. I was also streaming on Twitch and I was uploading videos to my YouTube again. And I continued this trend for a lot longer than just one month. And then, every aspect of my Osu career was skyrocketing like I've never seen before. I was impressing myself with how much my skill was improving every month. I finally got Twitch partnership after years of applying. My YouTube subscribers were finally increasing after being stuck at 25k for years. I remember there was a time where I felt that whatever video I uploaded would just automatically hit the YouTube algorithm. And for the first time, I was getting sponsorships for my YouTube videos. Everything was going so well. And then on February 2nd, I suddenly stopped playing Osu altogether. But why? Because I got a job. Actually, no, not really. That's not the whole story. But I think that was the tipping point, just looking back at how close the dates lined up. So, going back to my returning to Osu video. In that video, I mentioned that my initial plan would be to train for one month, and then set scores in the next month to get into the top 100. Well, there was a change of plans. I ended up training for 20 months. And when it was time to finally set scores, I did rank up a bit, but I realized I was so far from the top 100 in terms of skill. If I wanted to reach my goal, I would have to play much longer than one hour a day. However, one hour a day was the most I was willing to commit. I, I couldn't afford to commit more than that without sacrificing much more. Maybe I didn't fully acknowledge it back then, but I think this realization had destroyed my motivation to keep playing. 
and for a few months I'd continue to live stream and upload videos. However, on January 24th, I got my first full-time job out of uni as a front-end web developer. And 9 days later, I streamed Osu for the last time on Twitch. I haven't really played Osu since. The odd thing is that prior to this happening, I was never planning on quitting Osu, and I never made any serious decision to quit. It kind of just happened. So for a few days, I didn't feel like playing Osu. And then a few days turned into a week, a week turned into a month, and then a month turned into where we're at now. If we go back to the time and motivation chart I made earlier, a lot of these things don't even apply to me anymore. I'm well out of high school and university. I have a well-paying job that I enjoy. I have friends and I have other hobbies to spend my time with. Video games in general just aren't really that fun for me anymore. Realistically, I don't see myself catching up to today's top players. They're just way too good now. So looking at the chart, literally all I have left is my YouTube channel and being Filipino. I, I don't really think that's enough to sustain this whole Osu thing. So to answer the video title, do I regret playing Osu for 10 years? No.